NATO codenamed Blackjack, the largest and heaviest combat aircraft, the fastest bomber ever built, the heaviest bomber ever built. All of these titles belong to Russia's Tu-160 White Swan Bomber, the biggest, fastest and heaviest bomber ever to fly. And on January 12, 2022, Russia flew a newer version of the Tu-160 from the new production batch for the first time alongside the Monica Tu-160M Blackjack Strategic Bomber and it's been a major talking point among military aviation buffs since. In this video we'll take you on a supersonic journey through the turbulent history of this legendary Russian legacy combat aircraft and show you what it's capable of plus all the juicy details of the Blackjack's impressive specs. The inception and history of the Great Bomber The Tu-160 is a supersonic variable sweep-wing heavy strategic bomber designed by the Soviet Union's Tupolev Design Bureau in the 1970s. It is the largest and heaviest Mach 2 Plus supersonic military aircraft ever built and second in overall length to the experimental XB-70 Valkyrie. At the time of making this video, it's the largest and heaviest combat aircraft, the fastest bomber in use, and the largest and heaviest variable sweep-wing airplane ever flown. To put the prowess of the Tu-160 into perspective, supersonic aircraft can travel at speeds that exceed the speed of sound, or Mach 1, which, depending on conditions, is more than 760 miles per hour. The Tu-160 can achieve a speed of more than twice that, or Mach 2 Plus. The Tu-160's variable sweep wing, also known as a swing wing, means the wings can be swept back and then returned to their original straight position during flight. Being able to modify the aircraft's form in this way while flying allows the Tu-160 to reach Mach 2 Plus speeds and then return to cruising speed while maintaining aerodynamic stability. In the aviation trade, aircraft with swing wings are called variable geometry aircraft. As a strategic bomber, the Tu-160 is a medium to long range penetration bomber, designed to drop large amounts of air to ground weaponry onto distant targets to debilitate the enemy's capacity to wage war. Unlike tactical bombers, penetrators, fighter bombers and attack aircraft, which are used in air interdiction operations to attack enemy combatants and military equipment, strategic bombers are designed to fly into enemy territory to destroy strategic targets such as infrastructure, logistics operations, military installations, factories, cities and civilians. As well as conducting strategic bombing campaigns, the strategic bombers can also be used for tactical missions. There are currently only three countries that operate strategic bombers, the United States, Russia and China. Since its inception, the Tupolev produced Tu-160, given the NATO codename Blackjack and nicknamed in the Soviet Union as the White Swan, has been the largest jet-powered swing-wing combat aircraft platform ever produced, mounting the most powerful jet engines fitted to any military aircraft. Origins of the Tu-160 date as far back as 1967, when the first competition for a supersonic strategic heavy bomber was launched in the Soviet Union. In 1972, the Soviet Union announced a new multi-mission bomber competition to create a new supersonic variable geometry or swing wing heavy bomber with a maximum speed of Mach 2.3, which was developed as a direct counterproduct to the US Air Force's Rockwell B-1 Lancer strategic bomber that was gaining notoriety in the United States. While similar in appearance to the American B-1 Lancer, the Tu-160 is a different class of combat aircraft, its primary role being a standoff missile platform or strategic missile carrier. The Tu-160 is also larger, it has a 70% faster maximum speed than the B-1 and has a slightly greater combat range, though the B-1 has a larger combined carrying capacity with its external payload. Another noticeable difference is that the B-1's colour scheme is usually subdued dark grey to reduce visibility. The Tu-160 on the other hand is painted with anti-flash white, giving it the nickname among Russian airmen White Swan. In contrast, the B-1 Lancer served primarily to deliver large amounts of precision munitions in the form of cruise missiles and other potent air-to-surface types. 
However, the Lancer had a slighter radar signature and would evolve to employ a wider range of weapons, though it was stripped of nuclear weapons capability after 2010. The Tupolev system, though having mostly fallen to general neglect and underuse since the end of the Cold War, has recently received more attention as Russia strives to regain its former military glory. Though looking every bit a direct copy of the B-1 Lancer bomber, the Tu-160 is in fact many times larger than her American counterpart, though no less lethal, and sports better range and larger munitions capability. The Tu-160 made its first flight in December 1981 and entered operational service much later in 1987. Though capable of conventional attacks, the Blackjack's most important mission was, and remains, to approach close enough to North America to release up to a dozen cruise missiles, each with nuclear warheads 17 times the yield of the Fat Man bomb dropped on Hiroshima. The most promising strategy to approach the US for the Tu-160 was via the Arctic, but that still entailed evading detection and interception by US and Canadian land-based radars, interceptors and AWACS, airborne early warning aircraft. And just getting there would take many hours, as the Blackjack cruised at just 600 miles per hour, the same speed as a 747 airliner. To stave off crew burnout, Tu-160 designers thoughtfully included massage rollers in the crew's zero-altitude ejection seats, a galley kitchen and a toilet in the aft crew compartment. Despite its size, Tupolev designers managed to reduce the Tu-160's radar cross-section to between 10 and 15 square metres, making it comparable to an F-15 fighter jet signature on a radar screen. Thus, the Tu-160 crew would approach at a low altitude to minimise detection range, using its subcar terrain following radar to avoid a ground collision. Passive warning receivers would inform the crew once they were detected, at which point they would employ a self-defence radar jammer and light up the afterburners to surge to Mach 2 to evade interceptors. Designing the Tu-160 The Tu-160 is a variable geometry wing aircraft. The Behemoth bomber has four extremely powerful Kuznetsov NK-32 afterburning turbojet engines, the most powerful ever fitted to any combat aircraft. The engines are mounted under gigantic wings spanning 54 metres, more than half a football field in length from wingtip to wingtip. The massive blended wings could swing between three positions, fully extended at 20 degrees to maximise lift, then swept back to 35 degrees to reduce drag for subsonic cruising, and then tucked fully back to 65 degrees when using the afterburners to sprint at the maximum speed of Mach 2.05. The airframe's aerodynamically unstable characteristics were automatically compensated for by a quadruple redundant fly-by-wire control system. Full-span slats are used on the leading edges, with double-slotted flaps on the trailing edges and cruciform tail. Titanium constitutes around 30% of the aircraft's 110-ton empty weight, and the largest component, the swing-wing hinge, weighs 6 tons. The Tu-160's internal fuel capacity is 130 tons. That's enough fuel to fly 7,500 miles with a 50% missile payload. The plane is also equipped with a retractable probe and drogue in-flight refueling system for even greater range missions if desired. A crew of four operates the Tu-160 bomber on its long-distance missions. A pilot and co-pilot seated side by side in the front, a bombardier and a defensive systems operator subspecialized in weapons and self-defense systems. All are seated in K-36LM ejection seats. Unlike the American B-1B Lancer, which reduced the original Mach 2 Plus requirement for the B-1A to achieve a smaller radar cross-section, the Tu-160 retains variable intake ramps and is capable of reaching Mach 2.05 speed at altitude. The aircraft carries a TSNPO Lenenitz Obsor K radar for tracking ground and air targets and a separate Sopcar terrain following radar which goes by the NATO codename Clampipe. Although the Tu-160 was designed for reduced detectability by radar and infrared signatures, it is not a stealth aircraft. 
Nevertheless, according to a Russian source, Lieutenant General Igor Kvovrov claimed that Tu-160s managed to penetrate the U.S. sector of the Arctic undetected on April 25, 2006, leading to a U.S. Air Force investigation. Weapons are carried in two internal bays, each capable of holding 20,000 kilograms or 44,000 pounds of free-fall weapons or a rotary launcher for nuclear missiles. Additional missiles may also be carried externally, bringing the aircraft's total weapons load capacity to a staggering 40,000 kilograms or 88,000 pounds. No defensive weapons are provided. The Tu-160 is the first post-World War II Soviet bomber to lack such defences, although its prodigious 88,000 pounds of payload capacity can carry a dizzying array of conventional and nuclear weapons. As of 2020, the Russian Air Force is planning to arm the Tu-160 with new hypersonic missiles, in particular the Kh-47 M2 Kinjal. Reenactment after so many decades. Why now? Why did Russia revive the production of the Tu-160 Blackjack after so many decades? The story of the Blackjack's production relaunch began more than a decade ago, when Russia began work on the secretive PAC-DA, expected to be a subsonic, stealthy, flying-wing design to replace the current manned bomber fleet. Full-scale manufacture of the Tu-160 variable geometry bomber and missile carrier, which was developed toward the end of the Cold War, had ceased by 1995. After that, only a handful more were completed, using existing components before Russia decided in 2015 to relaunch production of the upgraded Tu-160M form, primarily as an interim measure due to delays in the PAC-DA new generation bomber program. The PAC-DA program has been dogged by delays and limited funding, and in 2015 the decision was made to resume series production of the Tu-160 and postpone the PAC-DA. The decision to restart the Blackjack production line was announced by the Russian Minister of Defence, Sergei Shoigu, in April 2015, during a visit to the Kazan plant. A formal order for 10 new Tu-160Ms was then signed at the Kazan plant in January 2018, in the presence of President Vladimir Putin. At the time, the unit cost of each new bomber was put at around $270 million, and the first example was expected to be ready in 2021. Russian aerospace forces have declared a requirement for at least 50 new built Tu-160M aircraft, although so far no further orders have been placed. At the time of making this video, 17 Tu-160s make up the current Blackjack fleet. In the meantime, however, the existing Tu-160 has been subject to an upgrade program, emerging as the Tu-160M. The new aircraft is highly computerized, and the avionics systems include an integrated aiming, navigation and flight control system, with navigation and attack radar, an electronic countermeasures system and automatic controls. For landings, the Tu-160 is equipped with three strut landing gear, a tailwheel and a brake parachute. For takeoff, the aircraft needs three and a half kilometers of solid concrete runway, or just over two miles. The crew comprises a pilot, co-pilot, a navigator and an operator. Given its new lease on life, the Russian bomber may not be stealthy, but it's definitely a lethal weapon in Russia's arsenal. Well, that's it for today's video. We hope you enjoyed the content. If you did, please show some love and hit the like button and please subscribe to our channel for more fact-packed videos soon. Please share your thoughts about the Russian Tu-160 and the newer Tu-160Ms in the comments below and we'll see you in the next video.